In this video we're going to look at the FTSE 100 and by the end of it you should know what the FTSE 100 is and a bit about how it's put together and how it's commonly used. So let's look at it very fundamentally. The FTSE 100 is a measure of the value of the 100 biggest companies in Britain that you can buy shares in. Now let's look at the basic facts given that definition. So we said that it measures the performance of the 100 largest companies on the London Stock Exchange. So if the FTSE 100 is going up, that suggests that the general direction of the market is upwards and you can compare it at various times in the year and see what's going on in the markets. Now, if you're interested, it stands for the Financial Times Stock Exchange, although now the Financial Times doesn't have an interest um, in the, the company. Um, the F Financial Times Stock Exchange Group is owned by the London Stock Exchange itself which is actually in the FTSE 100. And it's published every 15 seconds, which is quite impressive. And as I said, it gives you a snapshot of the market at a specific time, and you can compare it to previous times, and it will give you a good idea of what's happening. And to understand how it works, you have to understand the idea of market capitalization, which we often shorten to market cap. And fundamentally, it's a cost to buy all of the shares. Market capitalization of a company is the cost of all of the shares added up. So essentially, you're taking the number of shares, times it by the share price, and that gives you the market capitalization. And this is how they choose FTSE 100 constituents. They just take, in the FTSE 100, they take the 100 biggest market capitalization, and that's the FTSE 100. So look at some examples, you've probably heard of a lot of these. You've got your big oil companies like your BP and Shell, they're near the top. Um, I think at the moment Shell is the largest company in the FTSE. Um, you've got all your big banks, your big tobacco companies, your big mining companies, and all of your big supermarkets are represented there, apart from Asda because that's owned by Walmart, which is an American company. So what about these numbers? Because that's what you see when you read about the FTSE 100. Now, it started at 1,000 in 1984. That was like a base level that they set. And it's calculated using a very simple formula. You take the, what's called the free float market cap of all of the companies, and you add all of the 100 companies' free float market capitalizations up. And then you divide it by some number that's called the index divisor. And you could calculate the index divisor by taking the uh, value of the FTSE 100 at some time and then taking the market cap and dividing that by the value at some specific time. So the market's at 6,900 and the market cap is about around 1.5 trillion. You divide those two numbers and you'll get the index divisor. And the free float market cap is simply the sum of the values of the publicly traded shares. So things like director stock options or employee stock options, they're not included in the calculation because the public can't buy those shares. And a thing that confuses people when they go look up, maybe look up the document on the London Stock Exchange website or go into Wikipedia, you'll see that there's not a hundred constituents, which is confusing. Now, there is actually 101 constituents. It's a FTSE 100, but it has 101 things in it. Very strange. But when you get into it, it's not, because you've got Shell is listed twice. You've got Royal Dutch Shell A and Royal Dutch Shell B shares, both of which are included in the FTSE 100. Though there's still just 100 companies. The Shell is one company. They've just created two different share classes because they're a kind of Dutch slash British company. Uh, so they have their A shares are for Dutch investors and their B shares are for British investors. And just say a quick thing about ETFs and index funds. These are two financial instruments that allow you to own shares in the index constituents. That You'll have a FTSE 100 ETF, which is a fund that's listed on a stock exchange that lets you buy shares in all of 100 of those based on their market caps. Or an index fund is just a fund that you put money in. Um, they track the performance of the index, so if the index goes up, the value of your fund goes up. Index goes down, it goes the other way. And the sad reality is most funds that you pay these big fees for are actually 
um, closet index funds. But it costs 15 times more because you've got your Vanguard um, <coughs> FTSE 100 trackers, about 0.1% as their fees. These other funds are about 1.5%. And yet they're doing the same thing. So be very suspicious if funds <coughs> check that they're not just copying the index. <coughs> we'll just finish by looking at some other indexes. You probably heard of the FTSE 250. That's exactly the same as the FTSE 100, but it's the next 250 <coughs> largest companies after those that are in the FTSE 100. The 350, you just take the FTSE 100 and add all of the FTSE <coughs> 250 companies, you get the FTSE 350. 250 plus 100 is 350. The all share is pretty much everything. It's 98% of all companies listed on the London Stock Exchange. You have the fledgling index, which is <coughs> those companies out with the all share. And then in America, you've got like the S&P 500, and then you've got the NASDAQ, which is another index. It's usually the NASDAQ 100. So, well, there you go. There's a brief overview of the FTSE 100. And hopefully you've now got a rough idea of what it is and how it works. Um, thank you for watching.